Hello and welcome to Tuner Tips by Todderbert. In front of us we have the EBL. This is a smart quick charger, model number EBL-908. You can get this on Amazon for $19.99 and sometimes they'll have a coupon for 20% off. I got mine for $18. I picked up some C and D EBL batteries and I needed a bigger charger to charge those batteries. This one will do the job, just has some little nuances you need to know about it. So let's check out the charger. EBL says for AA, AAA, CD, 9 volts. It's pretty nice. Down here shows different batteries. It has two USB ports, LCD screen, universal charger. It's got some bullet points, indoor use only. Hope you guys know that. Automatic charge, of course, it peaks when it's done. It'll stop charging. Intelligent protection, safety. Okay, you get, all, you get the drift, right, guys? So... Yeah, and more of the same, I think, on this back side here. There you go. In case I forget to mention something, there's not much data to this. Um, here you go, caution. <laughs> Definitely, there you go. All right, so let's open this up, see what we get inside the box. Now, the main thing I like about this is it's AC driven. There's no USB connection where you have to power it with a USB block, which is nice. Some paperwork. So we've got the charger and some bubble wrap. It's always nice to see. And our box is empty. I'll go ahead and throw it off to the side. And let's look at the paperwork. What do we got for paperwork? First thing, look at this. Thank you, smile. <laughs> I love these. Uh, professional care since 1998. Okay, they've been doing it a while. <clears throat> That's good to see. Um, okay, there you go for another reminder. Okay, so yeah, great. We got a little manual. EBL, start here. Open original energy. I love that kind of translation. Uh, thanks for purchasing the EBL products. Okay. So, guys, this is a pretty basic charger. I'm just going to kind of open this up and flip it through. Right away, you're going to notice stuff like that. Um, output 1.2 volts at 1 amp. Yeah. You're not going to want to be charging your double A's and triple A's at 1 amp. Let me tell you that right now. Not a good idea. Um, yeah, just from experience, not a good idea. Now, I didn't try it in this charger, but now, there's some working temperatures. Um, I noticed when I was using this charger that the batteries got a bit hot and I was a little concerned because when I touched the batteries, they felt not warm, but hot. And I was a little worried about that. So I called the company and they mentioned that it's okay for that to happen. Uh, well, I have some little workarounds and we'll talk about those. Okay. And that's it. That's the manual. So if you missed anything, there it is. Okay. So the charger itself, pretty simple setup. There you go. We got a little uh, LCD screen. Let me just dust that off. All right, so the EBL LCD Smart Charge, or could I call it Smart Super Quick Universal Charger. Okay, yeah, Super Quick is key here. Um, and that's really good when you're charging Ds and Cs, and we'll show you those in a second. They put the AC cord in here. Just pull that out. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start plugging this in in a second, but let's go over dimensions, give you an idea how big this is. Um, it's seven and three quarter inches long. It's four inches in height, and then we have a depth of two and a quarter inches to give you an idea. It's kind of cool. It's a honeycomb pattern here. But let's go ahead and uh, do a little size comparison. Um, I have my CC pocket, always handy. <laughs> and then I'll bring out my deck of cards. Oh, your man, he's the man with the master plan. He can charge it like no one can. They call him the Iron Man. <laughs> All right, you get the idea. <laughs> All right, so we'll go over some features and then we'll go ahead and plug this in. Uh, left hand side, you'll notice two USB ports. Uh, they're rated at one amp each. Um, in the manual and in the, I've been reading on the website, they say you can charge the uh, Nicomilla Hydro batteries and use the USB ports to charge your phones. And then in the same paragraph, they say don't charge the phones. So I'll be honest with you, if I'm using this, I'm probably just going to use the USB port on its own. And if I'm charging D's and C's in here, I'm not going to be charging my phone. So I'll just leave this disconnected. So that's probably what I'd recommend you do also. Don't charge your USB devices while you're charging nickel metal hydride. Just to be on the safe side. I'm not going to test it to find out. <laughs> uh, here we have an LCD screen. Uh, it's cool. It'll have four little symbols for the batteries. Show you the charge status. And uh, it's like green lit. It looks really nice. Here we have a button. This cycles charge mode and discharge mode. 
So you can actually cycle your batteries if you want to get going quicker on the charge and discharge cycles on brand new batteries. It's okay to do, but I'd rather just use it in devices and slowly build up that uh, extra capacity. So yeah, this will uh, change with the modes. Now here with a door opens up and you can see you got four bays. And if you look in there, you have two nine volt bays also. And they show the ability to charge smaller batteries with the nine volts installed too. So you can charge quite a bit at once with this charger. It can handle a lot. One thing I noticed about the charger, it never got warm, uh, barely warm. Uh, it was the batteries that got hot. <laughs> Gotta love that. Uh, when you open this up, you'll notice there's two little clear spots here. These are LEDs, and those are status indicators for the 9 volt batteries. They don't show up on this screen, they only show up there. So when they're charging, um, I think when they're solid green, they're done. And if I mess that up, I'll put a little note here. <laughs> so I don't have any 9 volts to test. Uh, but here you go, these come out sliders. They seem pretty nice um, for an $18 charger. Not too bad. Let's see what else we got on this thing. We got a quality control sticker, more honeycomb on the bottom here. Got some information. Yeah, that was a big deal. One amp times four. Uh, like I said, for season D's, it works out pretty good. Um, yeah, it charges them fast. Let me tell you, 18 watt consumption. Okay, and there you are. There's your model number and everything else you need to know. Boom. All right, so let's go plug this in and show you how this works. Then I'll go over the batteries. I'll do a little mini review of the season Ds. I actually tested them for many, many hours. <laughs> you guys are going to love me for that. So, yeah, I did some work with this charger and the batteries. And so I really like an EBL brand. I think it's amazing. I'll go ahead and plug this in. I'm going to route this cable while I'm talking to you guys over to my power strip to the right here. Plug it in. There we go. So this will always light up when you have it power attached. Get that out of the way. There we go. So we'll go ahead and add some batteries. Now I found, like I said, the batteries get hot. My workaround is this. I'd recommend you take your batteries, like here's some D's, and you put only two at a time. So that I'd only charge two at a time in this. Now if you look, there's polarity markings. Negative, positive. Okay, I'm going to set this in here. The D's are a little bit harder to put in because they're bigger. Now right away it's showing it's low because I did discharge this one with a radio and I'll talk to you a little bit about that. But there's your charging indicator. Um, it's saying charge here. And of course I could hit this button and it'll say discharge. So right now it's going to discharge that battery. Now when it discharge cycles, it discharges it and it automatically charges it back up. So I just want to let you guys know that. All right, so what I do is I do this. I put in my two Ds and... Then let me show you a little trick here. Let's get this in there. Okay, the second one should pop up. Okay, showing the charge status. Now these get hot. Now even you know, I, I usually just leave this open, <laughs> and then I'll recommend like a small fan, uh, AC fan blowing over the batteries. That'd be my best recommendation with this charger because these cells get hot. I don't know what degrees, but definitely over 40 Celsius. I would say 45, maybe 50. I don't know. They get a really like like you don't want to like lay your hand in there too long type of hot. So I haven't seen them blister. I haven't seen them get swell or anything like that. But um, again, I called the company. They say it's normal. Uh, one good thing was the charger never got hot. That was a, a bonus. So what I do is just two at a time. I know it seems redundant when you have four slots, but this is what I would do here. But I will show you, it can take four at a time. Same with the C batteries. Uh, these Cs are great. Um, I love them. My radio more talk about that. Uh, they work great for charging in this charger also. You might get away with doing three of these because these are smaller. Uh, there's more space between them when you got them in the charger. But there you go. So you can intermix the capacities. But I recommend, like I said, just do the C's and D's and the 9 volts, but don't charge A's or triple A's in this thing. The reason why I say 9 volts is that the, the charge rate of the 9 volts are, I think, like 30 milliamp hour. It's really weak. <laughs> so this charger is built to handle those no problem. So let's talk about this charge a little bit more. Uh, short, cir short circuit protection, overcharge protection, overheat protection. So it, that's why I wasn't too worried, but I did call to make sure. And of course, reverse polarity protection. I did say I recommended season Ds only. Um, when I am charging on the USB, again, don't use these if you're charging these batteries. Also, keep this away from your radios. This throws out a ton of RFI. <laughs> You'll hear like the buzzer, you know, like... The Russian buzzer on shortwave, you guys know what I'm talking about. It sounds like that over like 
20 feet away. So this thing really produces some noise. Just letting you know because it pulse charges. Yeah, <laughs> exciting. Uh, so what else can I say? Okay, so we're going to do a, a little review. So when these are done, of course, they'll show full capacity and then they'll stop charging. Again, these will get warm. Don't let that freak you out or get hot. Uh, if it really is bothersome, just put a little fan on there and it should be perfectly fine. And even, you know, this, you're not going to hurt anything by covering it, but I'll just leave it open just for extra airflow to the device. But it's that simple um, and it works great. And these D's and C's are fantastic in radios. So let's talk about that. So I'm going to set this aside, and let's talk. My first radio I tested, this is cool, is my Sony ICF-19. Yeah, this is a great radio. Let's turn it on. Yeah, there's the buzzing. <laughs> yeah, okay, maybe I can get FM. Maybe a station. There you go, got some music. So as you can see... In tune battery. Okay, so I did a test with this radio. Here's my findings. Fully charged EBL cells. Okay, here you can see in the back. Open it up. This takes three D cell batteries. Ooh, nice and loud there. There you go. I have three of those EBL 10,000 milliamp hour cells. Oh, sweet batteries. I love them. Um, these batteries uh, ran very long. Now, this radio is rated at 400 plus hours with alkaline batteries. We all know alkaline Ds are around 20,000 milliamp hours, so double the capacity here. So you'd think you'd get about half of the runtime. Well, I got a little bit better than half. Uh, I'll let you know what my findings were. So with this radio, 238 hours of runtime at medium volume. Something like that. <laughs> and then um, the battery light went out after 238 hours. Yes, I marked down each... <laughs> Each little listening session, I watched the clock, and it, it took forever, but I did it. And then after the light went out, I had eight hours left before the radio completely stopped. So a total of 246 hours of runtime with those 3D cell batteries that are rechargeable. Rock on. So there's a Sony. Great test. A uh, good testament to these batteries. They come in cool holders. I don't know if you've seen it. Like here's like some C's. They come in nice little holders here for them. You know where they're at. You get better holders, but I thought that was nice. And of course, the D cells come in, of course, bigger, bigger holders. So next radio I used, I didn't have much in C's, so I used this one, the DX375. And this here, you just open up the back. I got it takes two C batteries. And I put the EBLs in here, and I tested this one out. So every night I was listening to Coast to Coast, and I was just keeping track. I think this is gonna buzz too. <laughs> I mean, no, it's not too bad over here. It's hilarious. Uh, let's see, we got band here. We're going to change it up. Uh, let's go to FM. So, yeah, that works out really nice. Um, you can see tuning lights nice and bright. Uh, operated really well with the 2C batteries. I got 78 hours, <laughs> again, logging, this is fun. Again, it took me weeks <laughs> to do this. 78 hours uh, on medium volume, listening to AM mainly. And then it started flashing low battery. There's a little, I didn't know it had that. <laughs> Never ran it down that far. So it starts flashing low battery right here. Then it ran for another six hours for a total of 84 hours before it was cutting out. So. Not a bad setup. I mean, 2C batteries for 84 hours and they're rechargeable. Loving that. That's a good setup. Um, so yeah, if you're looking for Cs and D rechargeables for your C and D powered radios, these EB EBL cells are definitely the way to go. I'm really enjoying them. I don't have any other brands to test, but maybe in the future I will if I buy the Tenergy or the, uh, I don't know, what's the other one? There's one by... I don't know, some Swedish company or something, but Bonai or something. I don't know. I'll have to look into them. What we'll do is we can test them, but I think they'd be fairly similar, probably from the same manufacturer as my guess. But there you go. Pretty cool setup. So, yeah, those two radios did real well with the testing. But that was nice. Yeah, I'm going to bring my charger back in here. Here it is. It takes a while for these to get warm. They're big. They're heavy duty. Now, they rate this 10 hours to charge the 10,000 milliamp hour battery. That, that makes sense because um, it's charging at one amp each. Uh, that's what I noticed, even when I loaded it up. 
<laughs> I had three and four. It doesn't divide. It, uh, it's still one amp for each battery here, which is something so you should know. That's why it gets a little hot when you have them packed in. But uh, you can see, yeah, it has a nice little indicator. I do like that. Um, real easy to read. And uh, just keep a little fan if these get a little too warm for your liking. Uh, again, the company said there's no problem with the charger, no problem with the batteries. So, yeah, overall for 18 bucks, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, the majority of your investment will be in these batteries. Um, I don't know the exact cost, but I'll have links below to these Ds and Cs. Um, I bought four packs, and I think there's six packs. Six packs are handy if you have like a Sanjin uh, D15, or if you, you, know, you just need a four pack for your HDR16. That'll work out really good. I actually like the idea of running these in my Sanjin HDR16. And of course, you got the D cells for your big bad radios. These will work really good in the uh, analog radios also. Loving it. So there it is, the EBL Quick Charger, a uh, model number EBL908. Again, I'll have links for this charger if you like it. I do like the fact it does have USB. It is very handy because, you know, we have our radios that uh, use USB to charge up, like, you know, your D808. You know, you got your input there. Um, I know there's chargers out there that will charge these batteries plus 18650s. I thought that was pretty neat. But, you know, with those USB outputs, I don't have to really worry. I got this charger, and I can charge it with this if I want to. So one charger can do quite a bit. So, yeah, definitely a good setup. So there it is, the EBL. If you enjoyed this video, give me a big like. You guys are the best. Two, if you like the brand EBL, the batteries, the chargers. I plan to uh, get a hold of some 9 volts. Uh, they have lithiums, and then they have the nickel metal hydrides. I'm leaning towards the lithiums because they seem to be high capacity. I'm just hoping that the voltage is correct on those, that it's not like 10 volts versus 9 volts. That might be an issue on some radios or devices. But I will check that out. I'll try to pick up one of those chargers with those batteries and let you guys know. And then maybe I'll pick up some Tenergy Ds and Cs and do the whole thing over again and see how they rate to these batteries, you know, comparatively. <laughs> but they're rated the same uh, capacity, so I'm assuming they're going to be similar uh, results. So there you are. And, of course, three, comment below what you think about this fast charger and these batteries. Um, would you be picking these up? Do you use them already? Um, yeah, if you like them, let me know. Give me some input. All right, guys, there it is. We will see you in the next video.